Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin remains in critical condition after suffering cardiac arrest and collapsing on the field during last night's Monday night football game in Cincinnati. There has been an outpouring of support from the country. His GoFundMe campaign that he's set up for toy drives has now surpassed $4 million. We want to bring in sports cardiology specialist Denise Sorrentino from Mercy One's Iowa Heart to talk about what happened last night. This is just top of mind for everybody today because it was so horrifying to watch. And I think what a lot of people are wondering is how often does something like this happen, this sort of sudden event in a person of this age? He's 24 years old. Sure, yeah. Well, you know, actually we call a sudden cardiac death, which is usually an arrhythmia, an abnormal rapid erratic rhythm of the lower chamber of the heart called the ventricle that occurs actually to worldwide about 300,000 people per year. Now it occurs for people of all ages, only a certain segment to young, otherwise healthy, sometimes athletic people um, like this football player. Although it happens very suddenly and it appeared to be associated with a tackle or physical activity, often it's an arrhythmia related to either an abnormality of the heart muscle that we call cardiomyopathy, which may be a thickening of the heart muscle, sometimes a weakening of the heart muscle. And other occasions, it can be a genetic abnormality of very small channels in the heart's electrical system that can allow a patient to have an arrhythmia or a cardiac arrest. Sometimes in young athletes, it can be an abnormality, not a blockage of a heart artery, but an abnormal course of a heart artery, which is not quite going in the right location and thus not allowing normal blood flow. Now, in some of these people, they have symptoms ahead of time, like a little bit of chest pressure or shortness of breath, and professional athletes are used to accepting some degree of discomfort or uh, pain and they push through it. And some patients have zero symptoms prior to having the actual cardiac arrest. Wow. So, I mean, so many things to learn from in this um, instance. What sort of advice do you have for people just regarding heart health? And I guess uh, we use this phrase maybe too often about being um, tuned into your body or listening to your body, but what sorts of things should we be concerned about? Yeah, so that's really true. You know, again, I think for the um, athlete, whether you're an adult athlete who runs marathons or triathlons or a high school athlete, again, a lot of athletes are in the no pain, no gain mode. So they're used to enduring um, limb pain or discomfort in order to reach their goals. My word of advice is listen to your body. If you are used to doing a certain level of athletic training or competition, and you suddenly start to feel unwell doing it, a little bit more short of breath, fatigued, unable to keep up, chest pressure or tightness, it's always worthwhile to stop that activity, relax, if it continues or reoccurs to be evaluated. And again, it's hard for us to know for this young player whether he had any symptoms or if he felt perfectly fine until that event. And again, some patients who have sudden cardiac death which is a cardiac arrest and arrhythmia, some of them will say they had zero symptoms prior to the event, but many in hindsight will look back and say, you know, yes, the last few weeks I was feeling pounding in my chest or a little more short of breath, but you know, I'm playing in this big game, so I was going all out. So I think the biggest word of advice, whether you're a adult athlete, someone who just um, does weekend warrior activity, high school athlete, collegiate is to listen, and if things are changing, or if you cannot endure the same level of activity, or you're having new problems with breathlessness, chest pressure, or pounding, we call it palpitations, stop, let your coach know, let your family know, and get checked out. It's always worth it. So you um, mentioned we don't have a lot of time left here, but I, I like that you said, after the fact, people will say, you know, I felt this or I had no symptoms. So what is next for someone who has suffered this sort of event and survived at least um, in, in the short term? Sure, sure. So, you know, it's hard to say exactly on his case, but often after resuscitation, which as I understand, he received resuscitation out on the field. Usually that's with a defibrillator or a shock. Patients are brought to the hospital often because this is a very 
a traumatic event, they're kept on a breathing mis machine, sometimes brought to a very cold temperature, which we call hypothermia. Usually heart ultrasound is performed called an echocardiogram. Uh, angiogram or a dye study of the heart arteries is performed. And then usually they will then subsequently meet someone like myself, an electrophysiologist, to look further into what could have been behind the abnormal heart rhythm that occurred. So it's going to be, you know, probably several days, at least three, before there's a lot of answers. And even after the full evaluation is performed and decisions are made, you know, there's going to be a road to recovery for this young athlete. But hopefully it appeared that the response was quick. Now in the era of so many people being trained in CPR, so many people having access and knowing how to use an AED, um, outcomes from sudden cardiac death are so much better than they were five years ago, 10 years ago, and earlier. So I'm very hopeful that this young athlete will have a full recovery. Absolutely. Training and technology making all the difference in saving lives. Dr. Sorrentino, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Thank you. All thank right. you. Stay